Hello, my friends. This is Chili Chill Show. Actually, let me read this. Welcome to Chili Chill and Friends Show. My name is Chili Chill and I am the producer of this show. The things you will hear over the next two and a half or maybe it looks like one and a half hours represent the views of Chili Chill and friends and the people making them. All opinions and quotations in no way represent the West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. So, I was missing for a couple of weeks uh, from this place. Uh, being in a beautiful um, Dama Picasso place uh, by Rockford, Illinois, doing a uh, the person I retreat as taught by S.C. Goenka, a Burmese uh, person who uh, has a fair share number of centers that teach meditation uh, that was practiced and is still practiced in Burma. It was kept there for this technique, actually. This meditation technique was kept there for 2,200 years uh, in an unbroken lineage from teacher to student. And uh, the retreat that I went to was 10 days. And now I'm back. I'd like to talk about it a little bit, but I don't know if. Um, would be such a good idea to talk about it right now because I want to finish this chapter and after I finish this chapter we'll see if I have some time and uh, I can talk about this uh, going uh, person school thing and uh, what I really think about it and what it is uh, I'll tell you one thing, there's a lot of good in it, and there's a little uh, share of not so good, but uh, we have come uh, to the, let's see, uh, we have come to the 18th teaching, I believe, no, no, the 17th. The 16th, yes. We have come to the 16th uh, teaching uh, called The Divine and the Demonic in Man. And I'm talking about the Bhagavad Gita book, uh, Krishna's Council in the Time of War. I'm reading a translation by Barbara Stoller Miller. And uh, in a few sentences, what happened uh, prior to this chapter, because this is uh, almost the end of the book already, was, uh, so there's a war, there's a good guy, um, the good leader, and good leader's uh, friend um, who is God incarnate, kind of like, uh, kind of like uh, Jesus, you know? A physical, like a human representation of God on earth. So, Jesus person. Or except uh, this is a, not uh, a Greek uh, or Roman uh, church thing. This is actually a Hindu thing. Uh, I don't want to say Indian, but because it, it kind of does come from India, but India had its own thing, and then there is the invasion by the Aryans, and Aryans kind of took over India and took some of their gods, changed it to theirs. It was like, ah, India is a bloody mess. It's, it's all about mythologies and who. 
Anyways, uh, so this uh, God person's name is Krishna, and Krishna says, you know, Arjuna, uh, that's the prince, you got to go and fight, because at first Arjuna, he's kind of hesitant to go to this war, because the war is between um, his family. It's like one or two cousins are fighting. And there's a lot of people he knows on the other side, so he's hesitant about going to war. And, but he's being attacked, so he has to go to war. That's what Krishna says. And then he goes on saying that it doesn't really matter if you kill people or not kill people because the soul doesn't really die. And he talks about all kinds of spiritual knowledge, but most of that knowledge amounts to one thing, and that would be um, that if we human beings or other beings wanted to know God, in then we have to look uh, within ourselves and without ourselves, because as within, so is without, because everything is God, and to really get to know God, uh, one has to not be attached uh, to that which is good or averse to that which is not so good. And of course, what's good is in our own personal view. And then again, uh, what is really good and what is really bad? Each moment is individual and unique. and. What's good today might not be good tomorrow, and what's bad uh, yesterday might just be good today. So this is the 17th teaching called the divine and the demonic in man. Lord Krishna says this, fearlessness, purity, determination is the discipline of knowledge. Charity, self-control, sacrifice, study of sacred, sacred lore, penance, honesty, nonviolence, truth, absence of anger, disengagement, peace, loyalty, compassion for creatures, lack of greed, gentleness, modesty, reliability, brilliance, patience, resolve, clarity, absence of envy and of, and of pride. These characterize a man born with divine traits. So um, this teaching is called The Divine and Demonic in Man. And uh, here Krishna uh, talks about uh, that which makes a man honorable, a man uh, spiritual, a man with good qualities, which are uh, referred to here as divine, as a holy, spiritual, worthy of respect. What are they? Fearlessness. Fearlessness does not necessarily mean bravery, because you can be ignorant and brave and go just pass your head because you're brave, you don't care. But fearlessness would means that you know that there is fear. You're not blind to the absence of fear. You know, you, you're not, you don't have the absence of fear. You know that there is fear, but you can go beyond it. You can step over it. Like, you know, uh, when, let's say, uh, you are driving and you have to pee, and you really have to pee, but you can hold it until you get to the bathroom. So it's like, so you, you overcome, you overstep your desire to pee. Cause, you know, because there's no bathroom, you're just driving. So Sajjus was fearless, fear. You know you have fear, but you overstep it. So you're not ignore it. You know it. It's just you go beyond it. Purity. Purity 
is is pure well, when people are pure they don't wish other people negativity they are very positive and just just you know i'm sure you've met a few more or less pure people they're hard to find though they're hard to find cuz uh, even uh, mother Ma uh, mother teresa uh, she I, I watched her videos she wasn't that pure she had a lot of um, ego and she served her cause and she wanted this and she wanted that. but pure people they're really giving and they, they, they're, they're just good people. A lot of yoga people are pure. A lot of spiritual people. You know, everybody has a certain degree of purity. I haven't really met anyone pure, like 100% pure. But there is purity out there. And it is um, a divine trait. Determination. Determination is um, it's like effort, man, you know? You have to be determined to do something. If you got a job to do, you go and do it. It's a very honorable quality. The discipline of knowledge. Now, this means um, you're inquisitive. You want to know how things work. You want to know who people are. You want to know yourself. You want to know the world around you. You have a thirst and hunger for knowledge. And so you study. You actually uh, put some sort of determination into getting to know things. Very good quality. Charity. Giving is divine. Self-control. Remember what I was talking about, uh, taking a piss? You don't go pissing inside the car, do you? You don't piss all over yourself, if you, even if you really want to, because you don't want to try. So, because you control yourself, self-control is great, and just like you control yourself when you want to pee, you can control yourself at any time. You can control yourself when you want a cigarette. You can control yourself when you're on a diet. Self-control. Sacrifice. Well, I think sacrifice here means sometimes you have to sacrifice what's good for you to do something good for the world. A very uh, brilliant example would be in times of war, when Someone let's say you're you're here with your platoon, right? And there's like you guys that got guys around you, and the enemy throws a grenade and it falls right there where there's ten people, and you know it's gonna blow up, and all ten people are gonna die. So what do you do? You jump on the grenade, and you hold it really tight. Tight. So when it blows up, only you would die, and your friends will live. Now that's sacrifice. That's the highest sacrifice you can do. Study of sacred lore. Study of sacred lore is uh, what we're doing right now. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, it's it, it's a good thing to do. It's good to know wisdom and make sense out of it. It's good to look into holy books and not take them, take, take them for words, but actually study and see what things really mean. Penance. Ah, well, I don't, uh, penance uh, is a interesting word. But it is an honorable quality in a way. 
because everything in the in, if you look at it from a karmic point of view everything that happens is a penance for what happened before and sometimes i i, I think uh penance can be here as abstinence too sometimes uh you fast for a day, you know, it's like that's your penance. You know, you suffer a little bit, but uh, out of this little bit, uh, a lot of good can come out. Your mind can be more, more clear. That's, for example, one of the effects of um, fasting. Um, so, penance uh, is a nice thing to be. Honesty. Honesty, how can it be bad? Well, sometimes uh, sometimes you got to say a lie, you know? For example, if you got uh, some Jews hiding in an attic and the SS comes in and says, you got any Jews? You say, no, I don't have any Jews. You have to lie. But uh, usually in everyday life, honesty is the most uh, respected quality that can be in a person. And the real, true honesty does not um, diminish or increase the truth. So you don't say, I caught 10 fish when you only caught nine. And you don't uh, say, oh, uh, it was really nothing when it was a, a lot. So you don't understate or overstate the truth, because the truth is beautiful. It's the only thing that there is. <laughs> it is reality, truth. So every time we are making it something else, we're lying to others and to ourselves. And what good can it be out of that? Nonviolence. Yes. Nonviolence is... Um, it's beautiful. It's gentle. It's not violent. It's peaceful. Yes, nonviolence is a very divine. Nonviolence is is just it's pure. I stopped eating meat and fish, for example, because well, it's been going through. I've been going through a process, but. At first, uh, what really made me start uh, that path of uh, vegetarianism, veganism, raw foodism, whatever, w w was when I was fishing. And we caught, me and my friend, uh, oh, actually, I was just hanging around. I wasn't doing the fishing, but I went to a fishing um, thing. and. My friend, he caught some big fish, and then it was there in a the bucket, so he took a beer bottle and smashed them on the head, killing them. And um, I was thinking to myself, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't hungry at all, I got, and I had food in the refrigerator, and we caught this beautiful fish out of a, a river, and I was happy swimming in the river, and we caught it and we killed it. And I'm not, I don't know why. I didn't know why we had to kill the fish. And I felt bad. But it was there, so I skimmed it and I ate it. And eating it, I was thinking to myself, I've had enough with uh, eating meat and fish. Because cause I look at animals as my little brothers and sisters, and I don't want to eat them. <laughs> I don't want to eat my brothers. I don't want to eat my sisters. I want them to be happy. So, nonviolence. Truth. What could be more holy than truth? Truth is, and the study of truth, you know, 
tr truth is a very divine trait. Absence of anger. Yeah. Anger, when, when people get angry, they make a lot of bad decisions and call, make asses out of themselves and hurt others and it causes blood to boil and eyes to get red and well, a lot of things can cause eyes to get red. No, not just being angry, but uh, so there's nothing wrong with uh, red eyes. Red eye girl, come close to me eye. Yeah, there's a song, Red Eye Girl. I liked it. I forgot the words though. Red eyed, red eyed. But, hmm. So, absence of anger is divine. Disengagement. Hey, we're busy, busy people. We're always looking to do things. When we get done with one thing, we're looking to get into something else. Hey. Taking it easy, relaxing sometimes, not doing things could make a lot of peace. Just for yourself and for others sometimes. You know, sometimes because we're bored, we go and do something and it causes uh, our friends to raise them up and everybody, I don't know. Mm. Sometimes it's good to do things, sometimes it's not good to do things. I look at it in a, I look at this through the eye of Tao in a yin and yang sort of way. Yin and yang have to be, has to be in harmony. So there is yin and there is yang and when there is more yin uh, than yang, that's uh, not very good. When there is more yang, which is action, than yin. It's also not good. So it's good to be in yin yang. But uh, this, but usually people are more on the yang side. They want to do things. But which sometimes has to be done. It's a beautiful thing to do a lot. You know, sometimes you have to go at it and work for a whole week nonstop without sleep just to get this thing done just because it has to be done. And then you can go and take a week off and just chill. Uh, what else we have? Peace. Let there be peace. Peace is holy indeed. Peace and truth and love, non-violence, non non-anger. These are beautiful qualities. Loyalty. Ah, well, loyalty is a good quality. Sometimes, though, loyalty can be not as good when loyalty is so ignorant. When, let's say, you're loyal to your gang, and your gang tells you to go hurt somebody, hurt an innocent person, and you go and do it because you're loyal, that's, that's bad loyalty, you know? But when you're loyal to, when you're loyal to good, goodness, when you're loyal to your friends, when you're loyal to your, you know, you, when you're loyal to wisdom, that's the highest loyalty of them all. Be loyal to wisdom. That's what I'm, that's my thing. I'm a wisdom person. I'm like, wisdom, that's where I want to be. <laughs> Loyalty. Compassion for creatures. Yes. We are a family. Big and small, visible, visible and invincible. We're all in this together. There's a lot of creatures out there. There's a lot of beings. We're, 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 we're all... Spirits, we, we all have spirit, we all have mind, we all have consciousness. Sometimes it's bigger than others, but doesn't make someone better, uh, doesn't make someone uh, more of a being if, if you have a bigger consciousness. Like, for example, here's me and here's an ant. 
what makes me better than an ant? Just because I'm sitting here talking to you? Mm -mm. No, we're all equal in this. We're all family. You know, like big brothers and little, uh, big sisters and our little bro uh, brothers and sisters, animals. And there's other, the spirits are bigger. Our big brothers and sisters, spirits, they also have to be respected. Yeah. Speaking of spirits, when you, there are, there, there are spiritual uh, beings all over the place. And if you want to uh, be on good terms with them, Really, because they can help you out and things sometimes. Or sometimes they can be just naughty. But if you want them to be on, on your good side, for example, when you have a, a party, give a little drink uh, and uh, food uh, for the spirit world. You know, put it in a plate or a platter, plate of some sorts. Pour a little bit in a little cup and leave it. Just say, this is for the spirits and go and uh, put it outside and uh, the spirits will come and get it and sometimes the spirits um, work through wildlife like squirrels and bunnies and things so yeah respect the spirits the, spirit, the, the spirits lack of greed it is divine indeed. When you're not greedy, you are satisfied when you have enough. Isn't it great? Not to overeat, not to oversleep, not to overwork, not to overdo. When you have one billion dollars in the bank, what you need to another billion? <laughs> Gentleness. <sighs> Gentleness is nice. Gentle. That's how love should be made. Love is very gentle. Sex can be rough, but love, love is gentle. Let's see, we got gentleness, modesty. It's just being humble, being modest. Not making yourself into the burrito el grande. Look at me. Ah, uh, I am the man. Like I am the miss. You know, I am the king of this place. You know, so no, it's just every, everybody is just people. Come on now. You you don't need to be like totally. I'm a pauper, but you need, you you know, till everybody like look down on me. That's okay, and you don't need to be like, everybody look up to me. Just be modest, be okay with yourself, you know, don't try to be either more or less than who you are. We're all average, we're just, you know, people. We're normal. <laughs> Modesty is an honorable trait, divine trait. Reliability. Yes. It is a very good trait. If everybody were more reliable, things would actually happen, and the world would be moving so much faster, but it's really hard, hard to find someone you can totally rely on, you can depend on. People say, yeah, it'll take me two days to do this job, and then it'll take them for two weeks, you know? Reliable, it's like you, you, you can trust a reliable person, but when person is not so reliable, well, you can still trust the person, just not as much. <laughs> uh, brilliance. Brilliance, I would say, 
What it means here is being sharp, you know, quick mind. Being, what, what, what is a brilliant person? Brilliant person can come up with a quick joke in, at a, in the blink of an eye. Brilliant people know a lot of things, and there are pleasures to be pleasure to be around with. Yeah, brilliance is a holy trait, a divine trait. Patience. Ah, patience is virtue. I had to learn patience. I was quite impatient in my days. But then I discovered this thing called meditation. Well, meditation in true sense of the world is not exactly what um, I just I, I was taught when I first was taught meditation. But um, the the best thing that you can do, what anybody can do for themselves, the best thing ever, really is to learn patience by just sitting, not doing much. You sit there with a straight spine, tuck your chin and just a little bit, not too much, just so you're comfortable. And the top of your head is aligned to your spine. And the way you sit, you have to sit relaxed, but not collapsed. And you have to have your spine straight, but not rigid. Sort of normal, put your chest up, uh, in front and then uh, let it all uh, sink uh, and your spine in a way feels like a stack of coins stacked upon each other because you are resting on your lower spine instead of tensing up trying to have a straight back and uh, to do that is preferably to have uh, your knees below your waist if you're sitting on your uh, on the floor or a cushion or if you're sitting on a chair uh, just uh, sit the same way if your knees can be straight uh, with the hips that's all right but they should not be higher than your hips because that would give stress to your lower back and you can't really relax if you have stress. And this thing, you know, if you want to be patient uh, and learn patience, you don't want to learn how to uh, deal with stress and tension. There's too many, there's too many things to learn. So just believe you me, sitting down with yourself for even five minutes uh, your mind will go through a lot of tension and stress. So physical tension and stress are not a necessity. Unless you want to make yourself a little bit more. But even in that way, if you, uh, you just sit a longer time uh, instead of making yourself uncomfortable right away. So you sit there and just sit. That's all you do. Just sit for five minutes. And watch, watch, watch your mind. Watch your mind. Let it run. See who you are. Learn about yourself. The more you start looking at yourself, the more you start seeing yourself. The more you start seeing yourself, the more you come to know what you think and where your thoughts come from. And uh, then you might just start uh, noticing where your thoughts leading you to. So trust me, sitting is the best thing you can do ever. Sit for five minutes. Sit for five hours. <laughs> I spent eight hours sitting for 10 days. That was great. Really, it was awesome. Um, So we have patience. Resolve. Uh, resolve would be, I guess, getting things done. Making a mind, making a choice. Sometimes you have to make a choice and you do it. 
instead of lingering oh i don't know which way to go oh i love him oh i don't love her i love her i don't know how i feel oh please make a choice do a resolve make a resolve it's a good trait divine trait krishna says clarity <sighs> Hey, try meditating. You meditate, you clear your mind. Your mind becomes clear. You want to dull your mind? Smoke some pot. Your mind becomes... Oh, or get, get drunk. You really dull your mind. But clarity is a really good trait, a really good skill. It's nice to have a clear mind. <sighs> Absence of envy and of pride. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When you don't have envy, when you don't want to have what the other person have, you, 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 can, you, you, leave, you live much easier. You have less problems. When you, you and when you think too much of yourself, then you have to keep your reputation. That's too much. Absence of this pride thing is a divine trait, indeed. So that's what Krishna says. So she says that this characterizes a man born with divine traits. Well, he says, born with divine traits, because I guess he's talking about himself. But in other people, usually these traits can be, can be planted and grown, and they can have fruits. They can be acquired. I personally was a different person five, six years ago. And coming to no meditation and being inquisitive in this to this whole uh, mind body phenomena and seeing what works what doesn't work how it works what this world is i've changed and a lot of uh, and negativity can can go anger can disappear it's very possible People who don't have any patience can become the most patient people out there. This is the world we live in. We all make it. You are what you make of yourself. Every moment is individual. You can always drop and start on you. And now we come to the other side of the coin. It's the same coin. Hypocrisy, arrogance, vanity, anger, harshness, ignorance. These characterize a man born with demonic traits. See how Krishna was, is, and will be. He talks, he gives quite uh, a lot of good divine traits. But only a few demonic traits. So let's see what we have. Hypocrisy. Uh, saying one thing, meaning something else. Kind of like lying, yeah? Giving yourself to be somebody you're not. Mm -mm. Deceiving the world. The devil is a hypocrite. Right? The devil. The devil's... Uh, biggest accomplishment was that he deceived the whole world. So everybody thinks that devil is good, but the devil is evil. He's a hypocrite, or she's a hypocrite, or it is a hypocrite. Devil. Oh, that's just a saying. Arrogance. Uh, arrogant people think that they're better than everybody else. You know what? In reality, we're all equal. So if you think that you're better than me, or better than anybody else, or 
If somebody thinks that they're better than a mosquito, <laughs> that's that's what uh, leads people to not see others as human beings. For example, um, in Nazi Germany, the uh, Nazis were quite very, very arrogant. So they had to kill a lot of uh, gypsies and Jews and cripples and gay people out of their arrogance. It's the arrogance that drove them to do that. So arrogance is a demonic quality. Vanity. Yeah, vanity. Van, van, you take something. Um, you tell them free time you tell them you it, 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 vanity. You know it's, it's an interesting word. Uh, I sort of know its meaning, but I'm not exactly too sure. With English being my second language, didn't really look in the dictionary. But vanity, I think. Um, when people are vain, right? People are. Kind of comes from arrogance and um, ignorance. I think arrogant people are vain. Hmm. Or maybe it's p people kind of being airheaded. Well, you guys know what it means. Vanity, Krishna says, is a demonic trait. Anger is a very demonic trait. You know, uh, yesterday or no, two days ago, this guy goes around, kills a whole bunch of people because he's got a lot of anger in him. And he got anger on uh, aimed at his um, ex wife or something, his wife <laughs> or girlfriend. But it spills over, and instead of killing just her, he kills a couple other people. Whew. Anger and harshness. See, anger drives people to be harsh. You know, cruel, cruelty, harshness. And it all comes out from ignorance. Because you don't know any better. So this characterizes a man born with demonic traits. And again, Krishna here says that the man is born with demonic traits, but they can be learned and acquired. Mm -hmm. No, no one is really born a Lucian. So there are people like Jeffrey Dahmer, who exhibited some scary qualities in even in childhood. But still, I believe that uh, all of that can be unlearned in Buddha Dharma. We have um, a story about uh, this man on Guliman who was kind of deceived by an evil person and he came to believe that it, if he was to kill 1,000 people, he would become a superhuman, immortal with superpowers and he started killing people just because he believed he was a gullible fool. He killed a lot of people. Then he met Buddha. Buddha made him realize uh, that uh, the insanity of his actions, and he became enlightened after. So it shows that even after you have been a bloody murderer and a very sadistic and evil man, you can change. This is, it's, it's never too late to drop what drives you mad and get down with what makes you a better person and makes you feel so much better about yourself and others and tell the truth. Uh, if you really get to meditating and studying the holy dharma, <laughs> the truth of essence of life, not the one that you have to believe in, but the one that you can see, the truth. The truth is obvious in front of your eyes. Then um, it makes you happy. Makes me happy. 
makes a lot of people happy. Happiness is, it's nice, it's good. Not, not happy like ha 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 ha. Well, maybe sometimes inside, but I would say more like joyous. Joyous to take every breath, just to be alive. Joyous to talk to people and see this beautiful world. The divine traits lead to freedom. The demonic lead to bondage. Do not despair, Arjuna. You were born with the divine. Here Krishna says that when people practice good, good deeds, good qualities, when people set on themselves on the right path of righteousness and goodness, then they come closer and closer to liberation. They come closer and closer to coming to know God, coming to know all, coming to know and be happy and pure and be be a, a saintly person. And people who exercise the demonic qualities, the evil qualities, the power hungry, greedy, uh, tyrannical, egoistical, megamolina megamol megamaniacal <laughs> megamanical um, angry people the that leads to bondage we become slaves of these evil qualities and um, even let's say a banker has a billion dollars and that's not near the billion dollars he still is a slave to this getting money getting money corporate you know how corporations are they cannot stop drop the growth they have to grow they have to expand they have to get more and more and more it never could the slavery bondage but uh, he says you know this is krishna talking to his friend arjuna the prince and he says uh, don't worry arjuna you're a good kid man you're a good kid all creatures in the world are either divine or demonic. I describe the divine at length. Hear what I say of the demonic. Hmm. Well, I, I guess he did describe it at length. He gave a, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, traits of divine qualities. But he did give a few traits of demonic qualities. I guess he wants to talk some more. Hmm? And yeah, he says that people, every, everybody has a fair share of this and that. But uh, generally, people are and beings are divided into good or bad. You know, like people are lenient towards uh, the Jedi or the dark side. Which one are you? Demonic man cannot comprehend activity and rest. There exists no clarity. No morality, no truth in them. So here uh, Krishna says that people who are more on the demonic side, they don't know, they can't understand when to do things and when not to do things. They, they lack the morality and they lack the common sense. So they're always existing a lie and always lying to themselves and to the world. They say that the world has no truth, no basis, no God, that no power of mutual dependence is its cause, but only desire. So says that people on the dark side say that there is no truth, no essence of things, 
no spirituality. That things don't depend on each other. That there is no interconnectivity between um, what is going on. There's only uh, one cause for all actions, and that's desire. I want. I want. I want to be happy right now, and if I am not happy, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta burn. I gotta burn. I want. I want. I want. I. I don't even know what I want, but I still want. Well, you know. I mean, I. God, I. That is all I want, and I, all I need, and that's cause that's all I have. So hey, be happy with what you have. Be happy with yourself. Just you don't need you don't need anything. You got you. Ain't that enough? That's just my little pep talk, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see what uh, the next passage says. Mired in this view, lost to themselves. With their meager understanding, these fiends contrive terrible acts to destroy the world. So these beings, you know, these people, usually, are really believe in what they think. So the more they believe in their own opinions, their own thoughts, then the more they, they lose the sense of reality, the more they lose themselves to their desires, to their wants and of greed and ego and power. So the understanding of the way things really are grow dimmer and dimmer and they lose the, the ordinary common wisdom <laughs> That exists as self-evident, and so because these people want so much and are never satisfied, they go at length to commit crimes and on other people themselves and humanity, and terrible, horrible acts are done by them just to destroy the, the world. The acts, they, they cause millions of people die. Look at Hitler, for example, or Mao, or Stalin, or you know, these are horrible people. Did so much bad for the world. And why? Subject to unsatiable unsa desire, drunk, with hypocrisy and pride, holding false notion from delusion, they act with impure vows. Interesting, he put uh, the word vows in here. He said vows. Because these people, they kind of make a pact with the devil. <laughs> they say, yes, I want an empire to encompass the world, the globe, and they go at it without any notion of what they do because they have the desire that can never be satisfied and they're full of themselves and they're just deluded and they don't care that they are in their certainty that life consists in sating their desires they suffer immeasurable anxiety that ends only with death. So these people, they only know of the desire, their desire, their own personal greed. And because they're never, never, ever satisfied, because the desire is all they know, all they know is desire, and thus, they always suffer constant anxiety. They are over, 
over over they're they're always not happy they're always not satisfied they're always hurting and their pain only ends in death but because uh, life does not end in death where do these people go where do these beings go the mind stream the soul so we go to the next uh, verse and it says in I just said that bound by a hundred fetters of hope obsessed by desire and anger they hoard wealth in stealthy ways to satisfy their desires and here um, we have uh, uh, a little quotation marks uh, because uh, we, this is what Krishna says they think like. So l let me read this whole passage uh, all together again and maybe um, not talk about it too much because it is self evident. But basically, uh, Krishna here says of how the mind of a demonic being works. Bound by a hundred fetters of hope, obsessed by desire and anger, they hoard wealth in stealthy ways to satisfy their desires. Quotation mark. I have gained this wish today, and I shall attain that one. This wealth is mine, and there will be more. I have killed that enemy, and I shall kill others too. I am the Lord. I am the enjoyer, successful, strong, and happy. I am wealthy and well-born without fear. I shall sacrifice, give, rejoice. Quotation mark. I'm not going to expound on this. This is self-evident. So say men deluded by ignorance. Uh, confused by endless thoughts. Caught in the net of delusion. Given to satisfying their desires. They fall into hell's foul abyss. You know, the more I read this, the less I want to expound on it to ruin the direct essence of what is being said. But since I do have a little time to kill, I'll go a little bit because this is the this is almost uh, coming to the end of this chapter, and then there's uh, really another chapter and another thing. Oh, I was hoping to uh, end this book today uh, but maybe it'll be a little while before the book ends because it looks like um, I, might, I, might, I might miss the next show or the next show and a whole bunch of shows because I'm going to Minnesota to make a film uh, with Ken Keen who's a buddy and then after I get back from Minnesota um, actually, I'll, I'll have another show. So next show, my friends uh, Renee and her uh, posse, they're going to drop up here and spit some rhymes and talk about life and art. And the next show, probably I'll give to them too, and then I'll come back and do the next chapter or maybe finish the book. And actually, that might be the last uh, Chili Chill and Friends show because I'm going to take a little break. Well, it's not going to be the last Chile Show and Friends show, but I'm probably going to take a little break from this and uh, 
get some uh, movies done and get me a public access television show, then I'll go into this whole different zone. And you know, life is an expansion for people who desire expansion. And uh, believe you me, I'm all about expansion. Is that called greed? I don't know. Not really into money. I'm more about uh, expansion of uh, my mind, of my awareness, of um, the goodness that exists in my life, in particularly because uh, I'm only in charge of me. But uh, just by wishing happiness to the world, I think uh, I think my I think I'm affecting the world. So I think we're all interdependent, and our thoughts do affect others and the world. So. Um, I'll read that uh, that verse again. Confused by endless thoughts, caught in the net of delusion, given to satisfying their desires, they fall into the they fall into hell's foul abyss. So these people of demonic uh, traits, they. Keep on thinking, 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 trying to satisfy something, trying to do this, trying to never making their mind, never having a resolution, which is a divine quality. So, but they're always, always lying to themselves because their thoughts, they don't ever have clarity in them, which is again a divine quality. Um, they, they always lie to themselves and. All they have and all they know is their desires. So they're always trying to satisfy them, never actually doing it. And thus, they become slaves. And as slaves, they, they make a pact with the devil, in a way, the devil of ignorance, and fall into hell, their own personal, individual hell. On earth, their hell is their mind. And after death, hey, hell is as real as heaven. And heaven and hell are as real as this world. Because here, we have it all. This is the matrix. This is, and right now, we on earth, as human beings, right there in the middle of it all. Self-aggrandizing, stubborn, drunk with wealth and pride, they sacrifice in name only, in hypocrisy, violating all norms. Um, um, hmm. So these people, the demonic people, they think that they are too big for everybody else. They think that they're Caesars. And the Caesars, hey, hello. Uh, wanna come be my guest for a few minutes? Sure. Yeah, come on by, grab yourself a chair. Uh, sorry, folks, we're gonna take a little break from the book and talk to two of my new friends. Uh, this is Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this, uh, these people in India, they, they have a God like up here, everybody knows about Jesus. And uh, in India, Jesus is actually called Krishna. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Krishna, like like this blue kid man, that he slays a lot of monsters, sleeps with a lot of girls. Sounds like a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, come um, sit up there. This one. 
So welcome to Chile, Chile and Friends. I'm Chile and you're friends. Sounds right. good. Chile? <laughs> yeah. I'm Chile. Let me move this mic a little bit here. The pretty sensitive. Yeah. So you don't need to yeah, really be up close. Project. Yeah. So tell me uh, who you guys are. My name's Ali. Uh, stage name, I go by Ali Twist. Uh, do uh, circus with the Dead Man's Carnival. Ah, um, Dead Man's Carnival. Have you heard of him? Yeah, I heard of him when I cool. see him too. We actually have our yeah, I gotcha. We actually have our uh, what is it? Our season finale show over at the Miramar Theater on uh, November second. Um, starts at 8 p.m. So all ages show. Ten dollars at the door for three hours of uh, you know, mind blowing circus feats. You know, dangerous acts of danger. These kind of things. Uh, you know, so it'll be, it'll be a good time. Uh, what is your specialty? Ah, uh, fire. So you're a fire spinner? Yeah, I, I oh. do. Uh, I haven't started the poi, but I do staff. Staff, okay. Yeah, I, I do staff, and then I also do fire eating and breathing as well. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, what else do you do? Um, I play music. Uh, I mean, a few bands. They're not, not a few anymore, but, uh, you know, just kind of whenever it's needed. Uh, guitar and drums. Okay, so, yeah. you sing? Uh, a little bit. Write poetry? <laughs> uh, I don't write poetry. Oh, yeah. I always, I've always respected the art, but I've never actually got into it myself. Well, you know, I uh, went into um, poetry night on Mondays at Lineman's Inn. Oh, yeah, yeah. One day, you know, I was invited a couple of years ago, and I haven't written poetry. I had to write in high school a little Okay, bit. gotcha. But I walked in, and everybody's doing their poems, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm bored. I'll write something. <laughs> and I didn't write it, you know, it was like whatever I wrote. Yeah, I wrote. yeah, yeah. And I was a little nervous, but I went and I read. That's good. And everybody clapped, and I'm like, oh, interesting. <laughs> like people will clap even uh, good stuff. People Doesn't matter. Clap, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's whatever it's, goes. It's interesting uh, how you can pick up a new trait and yeah, that's uh, yeah. On it and it's, it's a nice trait. It is nice. Yeah. You become a, not just a guitar player, but a, a folk uh, <laughs> musician. You know, like your own songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, occasionally. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, not as not as not as much as the folk stuff, but I do appreciate it yeah. as well. Well, thank you, Ali. Yeah. Uh, who's uh, let's continue to your friend? I am uh, Chris. I don't really do anything. I used to be in a band, and I'm not anymore. Oh really? Yeah, dude, Cutlass is over. Man. Oh really? What happened? Yeah, well, uh, you know, Andy dropped out and Randall dropped out. Oh. And then, yeah. Oh damn. <laughs> oh, it's close. That could have been <laughs> really <laughs> shitty. <laughs> It's already a shit. You guys keep talking, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and clean up a little bit here. And just okay. spill some coffee. But you talk. This is your All show. Right. Now. <laughs> talk about whatever you want. So, Alec, um, why don't you. Just continue. Oh, no? Yourself. No? Yeah, no, you don't. Finish no. Your introduction. Okay, finish well, it. I'll finish my introduction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the band broke up. Yeah, the band then. broke up. Okay. Um, cried for weeks. Oh, man. Uh, that's, yeah. That's rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I tried to kill myself a couple times. Okay. You know. Ran through about, yeah. about, about a pack a day. Yeah, well, you know, three packs a day. Three packs a day, wow. Yeah, cut down to one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that, that is good. Uh, that, that, for the wallet you know, and the lungs. 60 cigarettes a day. No, <laughs> Ooh, not enough. <laughs> um, so where did you guys play? Um, Where did we play, man? Oh, yeah, we played at, uh, at a Koku, which right. is... Uh, I want to talk about Koku. Technically doesn't exist. <laughs> So it's just for fun, really. It's just, uh, oh yeah, it's just for fun. Hey, listen, guys. Okay, I'm gonna go run down to fuel and get me some coffee because this is not mine. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, I spilled other people's coffee. I don't want it. And because, okay, you talk. You don't need to talk about who just. You just talk. All right. You, know, talk, you can talk about science or politics or girls. <laughs> All right. Hey, we'll talk about Yoda. So, Yoda. <laughs> All right. Got, yeah. yeah, you got it. All right. All right. You got it. Like, I'll be back in five. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. Yeah, here you go. All right. <laughs> so, and then uh, your name is? Uh, I'm Alec. Alec, uh, what do you do, Alec? Uh, I, I'm a musician. What do, you, what, do you, what do you play? I play bass guitar. Okay, that's cool. I, I go to Milwaukee High School of the Arts. Oh, Milwaukee High School of the Arts. What's uh, what's it like over there? Um, it's you know it's a school. It's yeah, an yeah, it's well. an MPS school. Oh, it's MPS. Right, Ooh. which you'd expect. Um, Damn. 
you know, I play I play jazz there. Oh, jazz. I like jazz. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. I have some good friends, you know. Yeah, high school life, you know. Right, exactly, high school life. And, um... Living the high life. Exactly. Nice, nice. So are you, are you in any bands, or...? Um, I'm in... Uh, I'm in two bands currently, two little projects. Uh, one of them is Caw. It's, Caw, what is... It's a little punk band. How do you, how do you spell that? Like... C-A-W. Okay, that's cool. Right. Compulsive ass wipers. Oh, wow, okay. Right. Children against Walker. And that, too. And, um... So yeah, we're a little punk band going around the Milwaukee scene. Okay. Um, where, where have you where have you guys played so far? Um, got your got your name out. Some band, yeah, I got our name out a little bit. I haven't been in the band for too long. I replaced a bass player. Oh, okay, okay. And um, so you're rather new to the band. Right, but I mean, I, you know, I've known the guys for a while. Oh, okay, that's, that's all that good. stuff. That's fun. And um, we played at we had our little practice space at a place in Bayview called Koku. Okay, cool. Little, you know, little down low place. Good friend, Chris. And, um, you know, we practiced there. We've had some fun shows there. Had a lot of friends over there. And, oh, uh, nice, nice. Right. It's, you know, it's not much of a venue anymore. Kind of getting out of the place. Um, okay. Still renovating trying and everything. To, trying to branch out a little bit. Right, branching out. As if the you band want. gets bigger, I assume? Um, something like that, yeah. Cool. And um, so at some places we play, we played at the Cream City Collective. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, local place, River West. River West, right. Um, also played at the Down and Over. Okay, yeah, that's, the, uh, that's the, old, uh, the old brew house. Brew house. On KK. Yes, and... It's a really nice place. Right, it's a great place. Good venue for us. Yeah, um, the, the, the circus did a show there while it's still the brew house. In their upstairs level, it's like a huge ballroom, but uh, we had to bring her on stage and everything like that. So, right, you know, yeah. fun stuff. Um, you know, just good local venues, some basements, some houses of friends and everything. Yeah, had good times, and um, I'm also in another project that me and Ollie Twist over here are actually working on, called Calaracket. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thing. <laughs> and you know, we're just starting out, kind of getting it out there. Yeah, yeah. I played at Trash Fest recently. Oh, and the Miramar Theater. Yeah, and that was a fun show. Oh, oh, Miramar, <laughs> isn't that where uh, Dead Man's? Oh, you know, that's a good point, Chris. That, <laughs> oh. is, that is where Dead Man's has our, our uh, that is our home. We have a uh, practice space in the upper oh, you area. We all live there at your home. <laughs> um, no, it's our home venue. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> it's like the dropping. Pl- He's dropping everything in this area. This is um, so. Um, yeah, Calaracket. Calaracket. Um, it's like this nice indie sound in. Oh, I've heard about them. Oh, really? Yeah. How, how do you how do you feel about their sound? Um, I feel like uh, it, it it produces a sound. Okay. <laughs> sound, the sound, sound waves, sound. you know, they they right. wave into my ear. Uh, it goes through processes in the brain, and yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, that's that's good. You know, that's the best kind of music. It's like soothing to the brain. Right. Yeah, soothing. <laughs> and yeah, so we're working on that. Uh, we're trying to get out there more, finding some good shows. Got to work on some new songs and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, hopefully soon enough we'll be a nice big band like Cause around the big Milwaukee band. area. You know, from mo- it's not too. It's pretty known around the Milwaukee area. A lot of people area. know Cause. I know Cause. Yeah, yeah he Ka- knows I know Cause well. Ka, yeah, yeah, everyone knows Cause. I've heard of Cause. Ka. Ka. Everyone in the punk scene, you know. Yeah, they got to know Cause, especially more or less. in River West. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, famous, so... Can't not know Ka. And our <laughs> listeners, you know, now they're aware of it, too. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping you'll check us out next show. Um, We might have a show, possible. No, probably not, because it's Saturday. Oh, yeah, that's not happening. Where, where, Wait, did you actually get... The cancer show? It's for sure not happening? The, the cancer yeah. show's not happening. Yeah. What, the what show? It was a cancer, cancer benefit. Show? Oh, a cancer benefit show. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it was a kind of... It wasn't a cancer benefit show? Where, where was that? That was, that was supposed to be a Publix Hall, but the guy that... And you know, was setting it up. It's just kind of an idiot, honestly. Kind of pick, yeah. Oh wow, wow! He okay. just didn't know what he was doing, and so that's probably not going to happen anymore. But we are having a another show at in the basement. I think November seventh, the basement of the drummer. I think of holy shit, or maybe the lead guy. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's going to be in the basement of wow. his house. Where, where's, where's his house? Or where's his basement? Probably in River West, you know. Somewhere around the area. Uh, you know, else. everywhere else. A local there. basement, yeah, of course. I mean, there'll probably be an event on Facebook soon enough. Public, you know. Interesting, interesting. Right, so it's the next show for us. That's good, yeah. Yep. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> so, uh, at uh, Milwaukee High School of the Arts, how long have you been there? 
Um, I've been there for uh, three years now. I'm a junior there. And what about you? Where, where do you go to school, Chris? Oh, I go to Milwaukee High School of the Arts as well. What a coincidence. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. That's, yes. that's that's really good. That's really good. I've uh, been there for us. about uh, two months. What about you? Two months? Oh, actually, I'm a senior. Oh, attending. oh where? At, uh... At Milwaukee High School of the Arts Oh, well. really? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> I used, to, around. I used to. I used to. I was enrolled in the jazz school. in the jazz jazz program for a while, but now I'm in uh, theater production. Oh, we have a guest here. Ah, <laughs> oh, uh, you you sit there. I'll sit here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll just continue. Yeah, continue. I'm not gonna talk. I, I want to eat first. Yeah, you can, yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, so enjoy your uh, food. <laughs> So uh, Milwaukee High School of the Arts. Um, do you do you enjoy your 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 education there? Um, for the most part, it education. Could, education, yeah. Like I said, it's just another MPS school, really. What is? What does that mean, though? Are you just trying the to, kids? You know, are you really, against it, or? I mean, in some ways, it's kind of corrupt in some ways. And then, and, oh wow, really? Yeah, like our principal, he's what, a little. Bizzle. Yeah. What, what do you What do you think of this uh, corruption, Chris? Oh, I believe uh, it's there. Yeah, you know. I mean, can't walk down the street without hearing a sentence that starts yeah, with sure, is. Why not? <laughs> oh, you don't. Know, oh, jeez. <laughs> Nothing like a good old, uh, you know, raisin cinnamon bagel. Yeah. <laughs> Just can't beat raisin cinnamon. <laughs> so you, so you said it's your, uh, your. <laughs> well, what was your thoughts on the corruption? Then? Oh, oh yes, it's definitely prevalent. You know. Okay. Wow. Well, it's a uh, good term. Yeah. Wow. Prevalent. Uh, yeah. If I, MPS. It could. Um. <laughs> so have you been a part of MPS your whole life then, or just? Yeah, starting from elementary school, going up to high school. Wow. All art schools, you know. Oh, wow. Out. So you're, you're, pretty pre you're pretty talented in the art areas? Right. I mean, I mean, I don't want to brag. No, I mean, but, you But, know. I mean, I've been working on it since I was a little kid. And, Which what art area? You've been playing um, bass since you, were little, since you were little? or Bass since, like, fifth grade, and now... I'm was, also, that, was that long ago? Yeah, it's fifth been... Fifth grade? I think it's been fifth, since fifth grade. Wow. Yeah. And um, okay. I was also... I somewhat recently started doing photography and um, and you know I'm also trying to get my name out there too in photography I'm I'd like to do you know senior pictures portraits for people of course and you know maybe make a little dough on the side with that mm -hmm. but mostly just kind of getting some freelance work out there so yeah have you um do you shoot in the Milwaukee area then, or is it? Yeah, it's all in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just little wow. spots. I, I like to shoot in like, you know, a lot of urban environments, like some abandoned oh, okay. so abandoned yeah, buildings and everything. Then. Right. Oh, Oliver, you you mentioned you were a senior. Who did your senior pictures? Oh, it's um uh, I actually haven't had them done yet, but um, <laughs> I, I suppose I might as well have Alec here do them right. because you know he's mm -hmm. such a budding young um, <laughs> photographer himself. So I mean. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, where does where does your inspiration come from for shooting in these uh, urban environments? Um, you know, it's all just I've always been like a little adventurer as a child, and I've liked to explore new places that people usually aren't in, and you know, see what's all there, all the character to it, and all the history behind it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I definitely like just. There's a lot of there's a lot of history in the city. That's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure, isn't it? And it's funny, most people don't realize this, but actually is uh, pretty rich in in history and uh, in circus art as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the, how's Grand, the Grand Avenue Mall used to be um, a theater, well, the theater across from the Grand Avenue, and as well as the Grand Avenue used to be a, used to be a circus theater, strictly. Nice. Oh, wow, Back -back in the, now it's nothing, that kind of sucks. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> you know. It is a dying art, but, you know, we're trying oh, no, to... Oh, not circus I'm talking about the Grand Avenue Mall. Yeah, that's the yeah, place. No, I, I, yeah, oh, I, I know okay. there's, there's not much going on down there. I don't want to confuse any of the listeners. Exactly. Well, not <laughs> not so much. You know, the, the circus art is, you know, something that's not as prevalent as it used to be, but, you know, we're, we're, we're working for, towards that. So. What other acts have you been with? Acts? Like, yeah, like other circus acts. Oh, I mean, not um, acts, you know, other circuses. things like, yeah, circuses. Circus eye? Circus um, eye. Well... <laughs> I mean, I've 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 only recently begun this uh, this art. Uh, I've started doing fire. I think last summer, <coughs> or no, two summers ago. Yeah, uh -huh. so about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. more or less. And um, I've always been interested in the sideshow as well. I mean, anything from the human blockhead to you know sword swallowing. Can you elaborate on these? The human blockhead is uh, yeah. is an act that entails 
uh, usually a hammer and some sort of nail or ice pick, and, it, and uh, it's nailed right into the uh, in the nasal cavity. And so it is, it is pretty, yeah, not too, you know, you're eating and... and <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I didn't want to, uh, you know, disrupt your... Yeah, so. I'm a circus freak myself. Oh, that's that's good, that's good. All carny. We need, we, need, we need more circus freaks in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it goes, it goes in the nasal cavity and out just like that. Uh, it's pretty entertaining, you know, it's not something that people really expect. So... It's a, it's a lot of fun, and um, so I've, I've always been interested, like I said, in the sideshow. Um, I'd say fire is a little more mainstream now these days, um, as far as... So mainstream. As far as <laughs> fire breathing and eating, you know, it's becoming more, um, you know, n well known amongst... Young amongst the, Yeah, yeah, of course. Youngins. Youngins. So, I mean, I think the sideshow has always been something that has been a little more, uh, you know, under the radar, and so... Uh, you know, we're working on getting that out there just as well as regular circus as well. So, have you have you seen have you witnessed um, one of these shows before? I've I've seen bits and pieces. Okay. And I I was pretty impressed from a lot of it. What uh, what what acts did you uh, did you witness? Um, I've seen some of the Titano. Titano. If you want to explain who Titano? Oh, Titano. Is. Uh, of course, Titano Oddfellow is our uh, strong man. Yeah, he's our tattooed oh, face okay. strong man. He uh. You know, he, he does your average axes, like as far as bending frying pans and things things, <laughs> things like this. And then he also uh, does, does things as, uh, you know, obscure as, um, let's see, what, what is a pretty, oh, he does a fire handcuff escape where he has, he has someone chain him in handcuffs and they actually have uh, wicks on either side. And then he, like wicks, like uh, to light on fire, you know, oh. like wick, yeah. Uh, Kevlar material and soaked it in. Uh, I'm not sure what what fuel he uses, but then he lights him on fire. And, I, and uh, I was on. I was doing fire safety for this, and it was probably one of the most scariest acts I've seen him do, because you know the fire is literally right on his wrist almost. You know, scariest. Burning. Yes, there you go. <laughs> well, yeah. You, you would think you think uh, it's not, you know, that frightening, but until you witness it and you see this, and uh, you know. It's, he literally has a ring of, you know, burnt flesh around his wrist right. after this because, yes. you know, they... It's disgusting. As he's, as he's, as he's yeah, trying to escape from it, you know, it's obviously burning him as well. <laughs> That's all right. You know, we're trying to uh, mystify our audience as well as, you know, drive a little fear into them because, you know, this is something that obviously is supposed to be a claim is not humanly possible, but mm. obviously Titano makes it so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's just not human. Yeah, Titano's a good guy. He's, uh, he's well-known in the River West area as well. <laughs> So, so yeah. That's some good stuff. Oh, it's very good stuff, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Good, good things. I want to ask you, how did you get in? How did I get into the circus? Um, let's see, that's a good question. Uh... <laughs> you know, is this your friend? You, you want to bring your friend to the show? Oh, no. I, I, he's, I, yeah, I think he's got the next show, man. Oh, you're showing <laughs> right now? Yeah, five. <laughs> Six. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> things changed. While I was gone, things changed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Virtually. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, due to um, uh, the circumstances that were not uh, predicted, seen before, uh, the show has to abruptly end. So um, when we get back next Tuesday. Well, uh, I'm not going to be here. Renee and her friends are going to be here. And when I get back, we'll finish reading the chapter. But it's a good chapter. <laughs> Have a beautiful and lovely, peaceful day and night. And um, be excellent to each other. Peace and love. And harmony. All right, thank you, guys.